The coronavirus is forcing us to think of new ways to entertain and educate our kids while they're at home. Lucky for us, we have superstar educator Jed Derryberry here with us today with some exercises that you can do to get your kids to be more creative and to learn something during this uh, these uncertain times. Jed, good to see you. It's good to see you too. Yeah, so let's, let's dive right into it. You're yeah. all about engaging yep. young people and kids and, and teaching parents how to do that. Yep. What is something that we can do during the coronavirus whole quarantine that so, can get us active? So I've shared some other ideas with you. Yeah. And every time you've kind of looked at me like I'm crazy like, mm. because my whole thing is, is being creative. The definition of creativity is taking uh, an old traditional idea and transcending it into something new. Okay. Um, today we're going to do that with foil with foil but I, I, I I'm, I'm deep from the south and I call it tin foil tin foil that yeah. is hard for me to say foil <laughs> um, but I call it tin foil it's aluminum tin foil. foil this is one of my favorite art media to use with with students because number one nobody's good at it and if <laughs> nobody's good at it and the reason I don't want anybody to be good at it is because the first thing you say what a student says to you when you engage in an artful project is I can't do that because they think of themselves not as an artist. Mm -hmm. So if you find a tool that everybody kind of thinks at, then it levels it the levels the playing field. <laughs> Nobody is really good at tinfoil. Now somebody will come around and, and make something beautiful with it, um, and you say, "What are what are you talking about?" So here you see, I just I took off a piece of, just a of piece foil, of just not a whole roll, not a lot. Um, you can get this at, at Dollar Tree, Dollar General, you know, all, for cheap. Um, but you don't want to be wasteful. So I cut off about a square foot. Mm -hmm. And then if I gave you this uh, and I said, you know, th how'd you sleep last night? Sculpt an image that shows me how you slept. You might, you might, you might. <laughs> During there's these no, times. <laughs> there's no wrong way to do what I just asked you to right. do. The thing that I just asked you to do, though, causes your brain to trip and fire in all new ways that you've never thought before. Because tinfoil, in your world, what's it for? One covering, thing, right? covering cover, the plate from cover, the cookout. Cover the plate from the cookout, right? <laughs> cover, cover all the good food, right? Um, but right now, tinfoil is our art media. One of the things that I love to do with this is there's a website that I use called wonderopolis.org. Like Wonderopolis. Ma like Metropolis, but wonderopolis.org. And there's, there's all kind of articles that kids can read on there. There's one on there called Where Do Birds Go at Night that I use a lot. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, okay, boys and girls, tell me what you know about birds and where they go at night, I say, everybody's got a piece of foil, you got one minute, sculpt your answer, where do birds go at night? You're saying, well, that's in the classroom setting, that's fine. What do we do at home? So at home, maybe you're reading a book with your kids. This one is a, is a great example. Now, you're making a nest. You're making a little, little yeah, nest. Yeah, you can make it, keep making that nest, go. right? Yeah. After they read the article, then we go back and look at their artwork and see how accurate it was with the article. And can they go back and revisit this? Can they change it to make it more accurate to show what they read? And then you've learned something. And then you've learned hands something. On. Your hands have been on it. Your brain has been engaged the whole time. You can tear a little more tinfoil if you want to make a bird or some <laughs> eggs or whatever you learn. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be just from that site. It can be from anywhere. This book, it's called Hey Wall. Um, it says, Hey Wall, a story of art and community. Mm -hmm. Tinfoil can absolutely be an artful media. And here in this story, it's about uh, some students in the community that create uh, amazing murals on their wall. But before I like to paint, sometimes I like to have a sketch or a model to go by. Mm -hmm. Tinfoil is a great It's a great to way to, that. to yeah. have that. You can make yeah. a little city, you can make little people. Yeah, you can see? go crazy with your, your brain is exploding with creativity Look at right that. now. Look, it's just been what? We've been talking about a minute and a half, and, yeah. and here you are. Your brain. Imagine if you had a couple of hours to sit down and really think this through, read the book, and envision what the tinfoil could become. Parents are like, can he come to my house? Can he come to my school? <laughs> the answer is yes. So they can find you on social media. I can come via the web. Yes, I can. There you go. Uh, so you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's at Mr. Dearberry. Um, I'm also available at my website, mrdearberry.com. I would love to come and work with schools. I, I'm even, uh, I've worked with some businesses locally <laughs> um, to help them get creativity into their workplace. And so, everybody needs that. Yeah, I, and you know what? Everybody's got a little tinfoil somewhere nearby. Um, there you go. Jed, thank you so yeah. much for coming and giving all of these examples as to how we can be more creative with yeah. our kids during this time where we just have nothing but time. It I've seems. had so much fun. It's been <laughs> great to see your creativity grow with each, <laughs> each passing event. Thanks, Jed. <laughs> we'll put all the information about those websites you mentioned at our website, yourcarolina.tv. So now we're going to do the mail turn. Guys and gals, it's still the same count. We haven't changed anything um, about the count. I'm still trying to stay in place as we do this. The difference is on a female turn, the guys are turning to the right. 
On a male turn, the guys are turning to the left. So, um, ladies, you will be dancing around the other side of him. You are not turning. He's the one turning, so you need to stay close to him and keep your eyes on him. Just like in the female turn, the guys need to keep the eyes on the girl so they know where they are at all times. And yeah. four, five, six, one, and two, three, and four, five, six. Again, we're staying close to each other. We're not getting too far away. One and two, three and four, five, six. One and him. two, three and four, five, six. I'm just getting out of her way a little bit to my left. One and two, three and four, five, lead. So I'm leading on six. Now I'm gonna start looking for her and I'm just gonna turn and face her. One and two, three and four, five, six. So you're not wanting to look at her on six. It's not five, six. And then all of a sudden she hadn't had a chance to get around me. I'm gonna take my time. One and two, three and four, five, six. Take your time, take your time, rock, step. Like on the female step and the males, turn, the female turn, male turn, you're doing all the work all the time, okay, just like in life. So, remember, you need to dance past him on the female turn, and you need to dance past and around him on the male turn. Let's try this to Muzak. One and two, three and four, five, six, female turn, three and four, five, six, basic, five, six, one and two, one and two, three and four, five, six. 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 Three and four, five, six. Cut the music. Okay, that was the male turn. We do have a specific start that we like in shag, and we just call it simply the shag start. We are in what is referred to as a closed position. My hand grip is the exact same as it is when I dance. My right hand, which is my heavier lead hand in this step, is in the middle of her back. Middle up, down, middle side to side. It's not a slow dance. We want to have a little bit of space, but we're at a 90 degree angle. I'm facing this wall, Dee Dee's facing that wall. And my hand is lightly on his shoulder not grab it on. And our count doesn't change. We're basically doing one basic in place, and then on the second basic, we're leading her out in front of us. We have to turn an entire quarter of a turn, guys. Okay, so the onus is on us. And what you wanna do is tap each other on the back. Think of five, six, seven, eight. And two, two three, three, and four. Five, six, keep her close. Three and four, five, six. Again, keep it simple, don't overcomplicate it, and just take your time with it. We're gonna show it to music now. Turn my 